Uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's jump in. You got your Bibles or your Bible apps? Get them out. More than likely, your Bible apps. I'm assuming we're going to go to Romans chapter one, Hebrews chapter twelve. I'm going to talk to you about one of our favorite subjects. I'm glad that I get two days with you. I was here last year for one day. It will be easier with two for sure. Romans chapter 1. If you haven't got there, just get there quickly. Romans chapter 1 verse 1 uh, says this. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before to his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and here's where we're going to stick, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says this, pursue, with all, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which, without which no one will see the Lord. Uh, in your Christian life, and especially, I mean, these are very formative years right now. Um, as you're, uh, uh, these are very foundational years in your life, very formative years. The decisions you make right now, the foundations you put in place right now really will be with you the rest of your life. And um, there's a few key foundational pillars in your Christian life that need to be there. It's... Uh, it's, it, they're key ingredients that if you can get those right, the rest work out. I don't know if you've ever uh, baked anything or made anything and didn't have the right ingredients. It doesn't work real well. When I was in high school, now you may have a mom like this, but I, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookie I've ever had. Like it's, and we grew up like this. And I, I literally thought every, every time I'd have somebody else's mom's chocolate chip cookies, I thought they were lame. I thought they were disgusting. I hated them because they weren't my mom's. This is what the kind of how passionate I was. And so I stayed home sick one day and I told my mom, I called my mom. I said, hey, I'm bored. Uh, I want to make chocolate chip cookies. She said, said, not hard, just there's a you know, recipe and it's over there and you can get it. I said, all right. So I went over and it's a simple recipe. I got it. And, it, you know, first thing is like two cups of flour. So I go and I look through all the cupboards and I, and I find the flour. You know, it's like in a big bin, white, powdery substance. I put it in. And then you need sugar and vanilla and eggs and chocolate chips and all that type of stuff. So I make them. And when they come out of the oven, they didn't look like my mom's cookies. They were, you know, my mom's cookies are like, you know, like, light and fluffy and, and golden brown, and, and mine were really wide, really thin, dark brown, crunchy, and when I bit one, really salty. And so my mom comes home, and I said, hey, mom, um, uh, your recipe doesn't work. She's like, my recipe works. I'm like, mom, I'm telling you, your recipe's wrong. Like, I made them today. It's not that complicated. It's wrong. She's like, it's not wrong. I'm like, whatever, Mom. I'm telling you, it's wrong. I did it. She's like, show me what you did. I said, it's not that complicated. It says two cups of flour. I went and I got two cups of flour, and I went and I got the bin. And she said, Banning, that's not flour. I said, what is it? She said, that's baking soda. <laughs> what? It was white and powdery substance. And I had actually gotten, I didn't know it, I don't, there's a huge bin of baking soda that my mom has, and I had replaced in this recipe two cups of baking soda instead of flour. Now, I don't know if you know this, but it doesn't turn out real well. You can't replace it, right? There, listen, there are certain ingredients in your Christian life that matter greatly, and you need to get them right. And one of those is this issue right here, holiness. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God, which is, I believe, our mandate. The word declared Jesus, not just through our words, not just through a pulpit, but from our life, the rest of your life, your life should declare Jesus to be the Son of God with power, but it's according to the spirit of holiness. And the Bible tells us that we're to pursue holiness. Now, here's the issue for me. If holiness is one of those key ingredients in your life that you've got to have in place, you've got to get figured out, you can't, this isn't an issue that you can sidestep. You can't avoid it. You can't ignore it. You can't dismiss it. You've got to embrace it fully if you're a believer. The problem is, is that for many of us, we have no idea what it is. I grew up in an environment that was very, very conservative and very, very legalistic. So I, I didn't, when I was growing up, we did not have a TV in our home, 
at all. I did not grow up with television because television was demonic, you know, and, uh, and, and so uh, and we did have television. Let me rephrase that. Every Thursday night, my parents would bring out a little black and white television, and we would get popcorn every Thursday night for two hours. We'd have the, and we would watch Family Ties, Cosby Show, and PBS, uh, there was like a Thursday night mystery show or something like that. That was, my, that was my weekly television, right? Just on Thursday night. And I remember, I mean, I remember being at somebody's house, and they, and they had a television on, and a Hawaiian Punch commercial came on, and they muted it because drums are evil. Okay, so this is, those are evil. I don't know if you know that. Those are demonic. And so, and so, because drums were, so this is kind of the environment I grew up in, right? So for me, holiness was one of those issues where like, okay, one, I don't even know what you're talking about with it. And, and even if I did, it, it, it's impossible. Like we would read verses like, I just skipped every holy verse in the Bible. Uh, the Bible would say, be holy, God would say, be holy as I am holy. I'm like, well, I... First of all, that can't really be what he means. Like, that's not what he means. You know, I don't know what he means, but he didn't mean be holy as I am holy because that's not possible. And if it is possible, it's boring. That's what I know. What I'm convinced of is I don't know what it is, but I do know it's impossible and I do know it's boring. And I began to get a concept that holiness is, uh, holiness is this thing that's not even possible and, and at best it's really boring. And so it wasn't even something that I even thought about or went after. And then I began to realize what holiness really is. In Scripture, there's a few words that all mean the same. Holiness, sanctification, consecration. Anytime you see those three words, they they mean other or they mean set apart. They all mean basically the same thing, set apart. There's a concept in Scripture where holiness is being set apart. There's two things. It's that I'm separated from sin, but I'm not just separated from sin. My life is set apart unto God. This is the picture. Now, many of us have believed that holiness is just separated from sin. So what happens is, is we go to camps growing up, and they, and they tell us that we have sin in our life, invite us to the altar, we come, we repent, and then the next year we're back doing the same thing at the altar, repenting of the same sin. And we think that somehow, if I don't do something, I'm holy. But listen, holiness, and this is how I grew up, I thought this, holiness is not a list of do's and don'ts. It's not a list of regulations. And just because you don't do something doesn't make you holy. Just because you don't smoke doesn't make you holy. Just because you don't sleep around doesn't make you holy. Just because you only download the clean versions of Eminem doesn't make you holy. (laughs) Right? Right? Just because I don't do something, it doesn't make me holy. Now listen, you need to separate from sin. Sin entangles you and ensnares you. It's, it, it's trying to kill you. It, it, it's, you need to separate from sin. But I separate from sin so that my life can be completely set apart to God. Holiness is that my life is set apart. God is holy because he's set apart. He's completely set apart from sin. He's completely set apart from sickness. He's completely set apart from depression. He's completely set apart. And so my life, it's not just that I separate, it's that I take that next step, which is my life is completely set apart to God. All that I have, all that I am, my desires, my hopes, my dreams, my time, my talents, all of it's His. 100%. That's holiness. Listen, we, have a, we don't fully understand this whole, this 100% concept sometimes. They have, you know, I, I, I chuckle sometimes because people have an issue with tithing. You know, tithing, giving 10% of your income. And they wrestle with it. And, and it's like, well, you know, and, and again, I, 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 I don't, we're not under the law anymore. We don't, tithing is not for me uh, an issue of the law. But they, they come and say, well, that's Old Testament, it's this or it's that or that. And they wrestle with it. And I kind of chuckle because I'm like, you're adorable. You think God only wants 10% of your money. <laughs> like we're struggling to give God 10% of our money thinking he only wants 10%. 
You know, I tell people, I'm like, listen, God doesn't want 10% of your money. He wants 100% of your money. God, listen to me. God's not asking you for 10% of anything. Anything. God doesn't show up and say, hey, listen, could I have 10% of your time? Be awesome. Can I have 10% of your, your, your finances? Can I have 10% of your friends? Can I have 10%? God doesn't ask for 10% of anything at all. We think that somehow we can come to God and kind of do like a, a negotiation kind of barter thing going on or something. You know what my favorite show is right now? And I'm going to, uh, uh, at a college, I'm going to age myself a little bit probably because this is maybe old person show. But I love American Pickers. Do you watch this show? Okay, so I love American Pickers. Mike and Frank, literally, if, like, I'm not too starstruck. If Mike and Frank walked in this room right now, I would be a little giddy. I would be a little bit like, it's Mike and Frank. Oh, my gosh. Like, I love Mike and Frank. Like, and so if you've ever seen this show, they go into, like, barns and, and, and all these places, and they find things that you think are junk, and, they're, they're, they, and they find all these things, they sell them, right? And so, but when they go in, they'll go into, like, a barn and be digging forever and then they'll come across like a music stand you know and this is the process that happens they come in they find the music stand, they want to buy it and then the negotiation starts and they say like oh man it's a nice music stand I'd really like this like I really think I could sell that and so they ask like the farmer like how much you want for this music stand and then you know he's like well uh I'd like uh, it means a lot to me it's sentimental I'd like six hundred dollars you know and then they're like Oh, man, I couldn't, I don't know, I, I couldn't do $600. That's more than I'm thinking. Like, I just, you know, I mean, it's missing something, and it's, you know, it's kind of scratched up. And I'll tell you what, $300. Man, I couldn't do $300. I mean, it still has a microphone on it. You don't find these with microphones on them. I mean, that's rare. Like, they don't have microphones on them. Usually that's all lost, you know, in the war or whatever, you know. So, so it's this whole thing, and they're like, I couldn't do less than 500 And they're like, Oh, man, 500 well, what about 400 And then they split it down the middle and 450 and they walk away. That's how it happens, right? Listen, I need to get this through to you right now. Holiness is 100%. We think we come to God and negotiate a little bit, right? We think we're coming to God and saying, God, use my life. <laughs> like, I want to be used for your glory. God, here I am. And God shows up and says, all right, well, you know, I'm going to need everything you have. Wow, everything I have? <laughs> I don't know if I was, you know, ah, man, that's a little more than I was hoping to spend. How about this? How about I give you Tuesdays, Thursdays? You can have my girlfriend. I was going to break up with her anyways. You can, you can, um, you can have all my music pre-1995. I'm kind of done with Color Me Bad. They, you guys wouldn't even know who that is. They, uh... <laughs> vanilla ice, uh, um, you know, and I tell you what, and I, I'll do this, and, and we think God's up there going like, oh, I, I'm going to need more. How, how about this? Listen, I, I'm going to need more in your music. Keep your girlfriend. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to need, you know, and we think there's like a negotiation process or something, right? We don't really say this, but this is how we operate. Problem is this, God shows up and you know what he asks for? Everything. Everything you got. All of it. Good, bad, ugly, all of it. He wants all of it. And he's the only one that can require it because you know what? He gave you everything. God didn't give you 10% of anything. You think God's up in heaven one day going, hey, listen, I'd really like to redeem my relationship with mankind. And what am I going to do? I need to give them 10% of me. Who represents 10% of me? Jesus. You represent 10% of me? Go down there and die on a cross. Representing 10% of me given to them. Like, no, you know, he gave everything. Do you know what the cross is? The cross is a representation of God giving you everything he had in his son. So because of that, he comes and says, hey, listen, you know what I want? All. I want everything you have. Holiness is not just that I don't do something. Holiness is that my life is 100%, all of it given to him. Everything I have is his. Holiness is, is one big yes that determines every other decision in my life. We've narrowed down Christianity to a whole bunch of no's realizing it's an, Christianity is not a bunch of no's. It's one big yes. 
It's one huge, massive yes. You know, when I married my wife, I said yes to her on the wedding day. And that has determined every decision for me. I do not walk into a room like this and every girl I see say no, 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 no. You want to know I don't? Because I said yes to somebody. Listen, holiness is 100% of my life. All that I am, all that I have, everything inside of me is yours. All of it. And that yes determines every other decision in my life. I have one filter. It's the yes I said to Jesus. Who are you going to marry? The yes I said to Jesus. Where are you going to go? The yes I said to Jesus. What are you going to do? The yes I said to Jesus. Everything in my life has been set up by this one decision. God, all that I am. Everything I have is yours. All of it. It's a prayer I still pray. I prayed it at 17. I prayed it at 38. I just say, Lord, my entire life, all of it's yours. Everything I have. This is what he requires from us. Again, holiness, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about this on Friday, but, but holiness is this issue of my entire life. Set apart to God. It's, we, the illustration we use is we have, uh, um, I have a, uh, you know, there's different types of brushes in the world. I'm sure you know this, but I have, uh, so like at home, I have a scrub brush. And I'll use it for a variety of things. I'll use it if like, you know, I spill, if the car leaks oil in the garage, I'll clean it up. If my dog wants to take a dump in the living room, I'll clean it up. If, you know, whatever, you know, I just, I just clean up stuff. And then I've got a hairbrush. And I use the hairbrush for me, and, you know, my family will use the hairbrush. But then I've got a toothbrush. And that toothbrush is, has one purpose in life, to brush my teeth. That's it. Like, whenever, whenever my kids come in and say, Dad, the dog did something in the, in the uh, living room, I'm not like, hey, grab my toothbrush and come on out here. I'm going to clean it up. You know? There's oil in the garage. Hey, get my toothbrush. Come on out. We're gonna, like, like, the toothbrush has one singular pur purpose in life. Right? Every other purpose is, a, it's just not, it's blasphemous to think that you would use my toothbrush for any other reason in life but to brush my teeth. That's it. Listen, as silly as it is, this is the reality. You know what holiness is? My life has one purpose. It's set apart for one reason, to give him glory. My life has one thing it's about. It's to be used for his glory. That's it. I don't have another purpose. And listen, people could say, what are you going to do with your life? I don't know, but I tell you this, my life's his. What are you going to do with your life? I don't know, but I got one purpose. I want to give him glory. And I can do that sitting behind the desk. I can do that on the mission field. I can do that wherever. But I tell you, it's all determined by everything I have is yours. This is, you know, when I was, uh, uh, when I was in high school. There's something called a point of no return. This is holiness. You know what holiness is? When I was in high school, we used to go cliff jumping. And so we'd go find creeks and Bridges and cliffs and wherever, you know. And, and so there was one called Hogs Back in Red Bluff. Anybody from Red Bluff? And, uh, and we would go out there, and they had these 60, 40, 20-foot cliffs. And, I, and we, a girl one time, when I was a senior in high school, she said, hey, can I, Amy, can I go cliff jumping with you guys? I'm like, sure, come on out. So we go out there, and we're swimming. It's like this creek. It's deep. And, and she says, she goes, hey, guys, I'm going to go jump. And we're like, all right, that's awesome. And so she climbs up to these 40-foot cliffs. She kind of climbs up, and you get up there, and she sits up there, and she puts her toes over the edge, and we're all swimming. And she goes, all right, guys, I'm going to jump. Here I go. We're like, all right, go, Amy. You can do it. Come on. And she's like, all right, here I go. All right, guys, I don't know what's going on. My legs won't move. Literally, my legs aren't responding. We're like, come on, you can do it, Amy. Do this. She's like, all right, all right, I'm going. All right, I can do this. All right, I don't know what's going on. I can't do this. So we're teenagers, you know, if encouragement doesn't work, mock them. And we're like, come on, you big baby, jump. Don't be a sissy. I am not a sissy. I will jump right now. 
okay, I'm a sissy. I don't know what's going on. So we're, we're like, whatever, you're not going to jump. We're swimming. I'm not exaggerating. For two hours, every 15 minutes, she'd be like, all right, guys, I'm going. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> every 15 minutes, she would tell us that. Until finally, two hours later, we're like, hey, we got to go, Amy. She's like, all right. And she just kind of walked off and went with us. You all know why cliff jumping's so exhilarating, thrilling, all that type of stuff? You want to know why? Because there's something called the point of no return. You know what it is? It's an invisible line right here. And you haven't crossed it when you're doing this. You haven't crossed it when you show up to, show up to church on Sunday and do this. You haven't crossed it when you do this. <laughs> you only crossed it when you step off. And you know what? And you know how you know you've crossed the point of no return? Because halfway down, you can't go, whoa, 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 time out. <laughs> Hold on a second. That's way scarier than I thought. Can I go back up? No! You cross the point of no return. That's holiness. Listen, I was saved at four, didn't cross that till 17. A lot of people are like, listen, you know, Christianity's boring or following God's not that exciting. And I'm like, it's like standing on the edge of a cliff thinking this is cliff jumping. It's like telling your friend, dude, you ever been cliff jumping? It's incredible. Come with me. He's like, all right. And then we go. You stand there, you're like, all right, whoo, are you having fun? <laughs> is this what we do? Yeah, this is what we do. Every once in a while, Wednesdays and Sundays, I do this, but this is about it. <laughs> is this the best thing you've ever done? Woo, no. No. You know what my mandate in life is? Is to push, call, nudge. <laughs> Force people off this cliff. That's all I want to do. Like, like, listen, if you think this is Christianity, you haven't experienced it yet. If you think this is a relationship with God, you haven't experienced it yet. Listen, Christianity was meant to be this. It was meant to cross a point of return. Holiness is 100% of my life given fully to him. Listen, you might have it. I'm not talking about perfection right now. Let's all get real in here. You all have problems. <laughs> you all got issues you're working on. It, the Bible says that we're to pursue holiness. You know what that means? I pursue all of my life given to him. Everything that I have. There's not one thing I withhold from him. I give everything. Stand up. You got class. <laughs> You know who doesn't have class today? This guy. You know who doesn't have homework today? That's right. That's right. Let's all be happy for me. Put your hand on your heart. Father, I ask that you would raise up a company of people at William Jessup University who have fully embraced the call to holiness. God, we, we're not here for a list of rules and regulations. We are here to abandon ourselves fully, completely, 100% to you. All that we are, all that we do, all that we have, completely yours. And Father, I pray you'd stir the hearts of people in this room to cross that point of no return. We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Go to class. Do your homework or something like that. We'll see you on Friday.